Hi, Mark here from Connected Healthcare New Zealand, another video in the series for the Mindray SV800 ventilator. In this video, we'll look at the display, which is the main interface with the ventilator once you're up and running. We'll look at different ways of displaying the waveforms and the layout. It'll include the looking at the gas supplies, the battery, and using USB interface. Also, basic things like cleaning the screen, changing the quick keys, and looking at the tools menu. Now, your screen setup will depend on your default screen that's been selected for your area. In this case we've got Site up and running and briefly through that again we've got the history of the parameters for this window, the Site. We've got airway resistance visible here and lung compliance visible here with the readings underneath and the trend. We've got pressure waves here. We've got the orange pressure waves, uh, the blue flu flow wave, and the blue volume waves. So the parameters over here, which are the readings, if they're pressure, like the, the orange pressure wave, orange pressure numbers, they'll correlate. So the blue flow, the blue flow numbers, and then FiO2 as well. So let's have a look at some viewing options of the main screen. As a default, we've got the waveforms tab open, which gives you a large amount of surface area to view the waveforms with the readings over here and the settings underneath. The settings will always stay there. From within the waveforms page we can pull out this Palmasite window for lung compliance and we can tuck it back in as well. Under the spirometry tab we can view the different graphs of spirometry. So we've got pressure versus volume there flow versus volume and we've got flow versus pressure as well. If we want to for any of these spirometry readings we can save a reference here and then the consequential waves will be measured against that. The values page, the, the tab at the top for values gives you all of your readings. Again the orange are uh, the pressure, the blue are the flow, and here's some calculations. The big numeric tab at the top gives you a large font of your basic readings. Again, orange for pressure, blue for flow. It gives you the palmasite as well. And as per usual, you've got your settings underneath. Let's have a look at some of the buttons in the top right hand corner. The first one is the history. This shows you graphical trends. You can navigate with those arrows on the side. You can zoom in in this area, choose display areas like all of the parameters or just the volume waves for example. You can toggle between events. So that's the graphic tab. The tabulature trend shows you a tablature form of the data with similar type navigational features. Setting trends shows you what's been changed with the settings, the history of changes. The event logbook is all the different alarms and messages and changes and so forth in there as well. So let's close that out. So that was the history button, gives you that history. This is a for a freeze key and it will freeze the screen and allow you to look at the measurements there. So you can sweep around with your dial or you can touch there as well and you'll have the measurements for those times right next to them. To unfreeze just push that button again. The snapshot button, the little camera there, if you push that that will take a snapshot of the screen and it will allow you to take that off on a USB stick if you put an, a USB stick out the back of the uh, ventilator like I showed you at the start. Here's the gas supply information. We've got oxygen, good supply, air, good supply and if you have a backup supply on the ventilator, for example a little compressor, that will also show there as well. 
here's your USB. It's not enabled at the moment. I don't have a USB stick plugged in at the back. But if I did, it would be in there. And we could export the screenshot that we just took or export some data and so on and so forth. So that's the USB. Here's the time if you need to change anything. And the battery's sitting at 100%, which is great. Next up, we'll have a look at the right-hand side. Here we've got some control buttons. So from the top, we've got alarms. And you've seen this alarm screen already when it comes up with the alarm messages. But that's how you electively find it here. When you push on those buttons and activate them, you can change them, just as we did before. These are the ventilation limits, and then any current alarms, recent alarms, and the audio as well if you want to change the volume. So we were in this recent alarms and current alarms windows before when we had alarms coming up. O2 suction. Now this increases the oxygen when you're suctioning, so you're preempting a desaturation for suctioning. You'll be familiar with that idea. Just poshing, poshing that there will give you a countdown clock as well for how long it's going for. The nebulizer. The nebulizer, you can either use an ultrasonic or a, a gas supplied one from the ventilator. You remember at the start I showed you the between the in inlet valve and the expiratory valve, there's the intake f for the tubing for the nebulizer. So that is how you activate it. You can choose how long it goes for. So we'll choose 20 minutes. And there you go. You can go OK and it will start. I'll turn that off. Next up is your tools menu. Now the tools you can pop here and you can have different tools that are available here. And then you can change the short key setup as well for these buttons here. So here are all the tools in this menu when you choose this button here. And then we've got some shortcut keys that you choose when you choose the right hand side short key setup. We've got four available, in this case one, two, three, four, and they're ticked. So if we want, instead of inspiratory hold, if we want expiratory hold, if you just select it, it'll say, well, we can only have four tools at the most. So you need to deselect inspiratory hold and push expiratory hold. And now the expiratory hold will be up here. Let's try out that expiratory hold. Measuring intrinsic PEEP. And that measurement will come up on the screen as well. You can see that as I let go, the ventilator starts breathing again. If you're wanting to clean the screen, this lock button is pretty handy. It'll mean that the screen is locked and you can't make any adjustments, which is great for cleaning. And you unlock it just by pushing that button again. Here's the menu button, which allows you to do some basic setup testing and so forth changing the screen brightness, setups and colours, and the standby button of course that we've been using quite a bit. So pushing the standby, are you sure you want to push standby? You can or not. Down here you've got the power button. If we push the power button we're not going to be able to turn the ventilator off as a safety feature. It says please enter standby mode to shut down the system. So if you want to put the patient on standby, the ventilator on standby, then you have to go through there and then you can turn it off. An indication here to say that we've got AC power attached and that the battery is also in there and it's good to go.